What is up, Spectre family? Today we have a very, very special video. We have our top five TV shows that we love to watch this year. This year has been really sad and gloomy, but TV shows have gotten us through it. Check our picks out right here. All right, coming up at number five is Defending Jacob season one. What I liked about this show was how effortlessly it really conveyed the drama of such a really precarious situation. You know, you, you, you've got a kid who's under trial for a really heinous crime. Also, what it showed is that Chris Evans is really, really, really versatile. Like, sometimes what happens is you get this character, like, he's Captain America, right? So sometimes you get this character that is just so boxed in, and you from now on, you're only that person. For example, Ryan Reynolds, when he did Detective Pikachu, people were saying, oh, great, Pokemon featuring Deadpool. That's awesome. It's typecasting, right? Typecasting. Right, he's been typecasting. So that's just Chris Evans saying, yo, I can do anything. I did this, I did Knives Out, I'm, I'm versatile as hell. Yeah, and speaking of Knives Out, what's funny is that in Knives Out, the same actor played a kid named Jacob, and Chris Evans was also in it too. I don't know if that was like a little inside joke, but just a fun fact. I'm sure it was funny on set. Also, I liked, without spoiling too much, you guys gotta go see this show. It's on Apple TV. Uh, all the episodes are out, so you can probably just free trial that. Sorry to put you on blast, Apple, but it's not like everybody else wasn't thinking it. <laughs> sorry, Tim um, Cook. Yeah, sorry, Tim Cook. But the thing that I also really liked about it is that you're confused through the entire thing. There's never a point. A lot of the time, what happens is shows hit you with like the answers at the first part, and then the characters, you just watch the characters figure it out. I like that I was extremely confused throughout this entire series. Yeah, it really like put the viewer in the shoes of the characters, you know, like an ambiguous situation is going on and you know just as much as the characters. Coming up at number four, we got Lucifer season five, well, season five, part one. Now this I really liked because there are, without spoiling anything, I can't really tell you much, but what I, do, what I can say is that Tom Ellis is spectacular and so is everyone else. It is interesting from beginning to end. And if you liked season four, you're going to like season five, part one, even more. It's on Netflix. If you haven't seen Lucifer at all, one thing that you should know is that it's a funny take on a biblical characters, including the devil. And I like, the one thing that I like is that they take all the good characters and they kind of show how they have faults and they take the devil who is basically the worst person ever and they show that he has some good in him. So I really like the take on it. So this, if you haven't seen Lucifer at all, go check that out. It's really good. Coming up at number three on the list is The Clone Wars, season seven. Everyone was looking forward to this. It was it had so much anticipation and hype. And in my opinion, I think it lived up to the hype. It does live up to the hype, but the one thing that I had a huge problem with was that they spent too long on that sister narrative. And that's, in my opinion, why this is not number one. Honestly, like I have seen some of the other arcs that um, they could have brought into the show, like the Darth Maul arc or the Utapau arc. And I would have liked to see those a little bit more than the sisters arc. But as a whole, I'm glad with what they did with the show and how they showed Ahsoka's development from, you know, this really annoying little girl at the beginning, season one, to this really mature Jedi. Or I guess she's not a Jedi anymore, but warrior. And shout out to Disney Plus for actually saving a fan favorite show. How long has it been? How many years? Uh, Since Clone Wars, sir. Yeah, how, we gotta check the stats, give us a sec. All right, we're back. It's been 12 years since that show and now they saved it. Ahsoka's arc was cool. I think they did redeem themselves in the final episodes. Definitely, you know, there's a reason why it's it's on the IMDb's highest rated TV, uh, TV episodes of all time. And I think Kevin Kiner did an amazing job with the music. And the visuals were just like, you know, you could, you could have taken any one of them. It could have been a painting. Just stunning work. Looks like Disney actually has a plan now. Yeah. Now, uh, speaking of The Mandalorian, our number two spot on this list is The Mandalorian Season 2. I had some... Uh, highest expectation for the show, seeing how good season one was. And I think Dave Filoni, John Favreau, and the whole team nailed it. Everything I wanted and more. Oh, totally. This was this was one of those shows that from from I won't say start to finish, but from episode three to finish just took us on a ride. And I think that was the thing that I woke up to uh, to see. It was really well done. Shout out to the finale, because the finale spoiler if you've watched the show already, you already know what it is. If you watch our video, you already know what it is. But the finale spoiler was incredible. So you got to check that out. Exactly, yeah. And I think we got we to gotta take a minute to appreciate just how convincing of a job they did with the VFX. 
the the volume and the tech they used really made us feel like we were in the places that the characters were in. You know, that ocean in uh, episode three, they never actually went to the sea. That was all artificially recreated. Yeah, the, the CGI guys, like, pay them. Yeah, please. <laughs> pay them. They carried the show, other than Pedro Pascal and Gina Carano and all those other people. Like, I think Carl Weathers, shout out to him. He directed an episode, which I thought was really, really good. Yeah, everyone nailed it. And at number one comes Better Call Saul. And now there is, there's no shock that this was number one on the list. I really love how they developed Jimmy's character for the last five seasons into the Saul we all know and love. Yeah, 100% agree. You know, uh, we were all looking forward to Jimmy becoming this kind of, you know, derelict con man of a lawyer sort of guy. And it took them five seasons to get there. But by that time, you know, this show is already looking so much like Breaking Bad. You got the action sequences. You've got these wonderful bits of dialogue like the Bad Choice Road line from Mike. And finally, the show kind of took on a poetic character of its own especially with the ice cream scene of the ants, you know, like the ice cream being a metaphor for Saul's decaying morality. I really thought that was powerful. Um, another thing I'd like to touch on is how they took a throwaway line from Breaking Bad, the mention of Lalo, and they made him into such an important and frankly intimidating character, especially with the final scene. Spoilers ahead. He goes absolutely crazy on a bunch of supposedly trained hitmen. It's just an amazing sight to see how well Vince Gilligan and the team have developed this show into something that is a worthy success for Breaking Bad. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, and comment with your thoughts. By supporting this channel, you are allowing us to keep making this great content and keep Spectre React going. Thanks for watching, and peace out.